You are looking live at the daily chart of the NASDAQ. And something significant happened today for the NASDAQ. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, I just wanted to point out that the index today was up, you know, nine points or 007% and uh, closed at 14,103. I just wanted to point out that the um, you can see that the uh, 21 and the 10 have driven through the um, 50 and the low of the session has been above the 21 for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days. And the 50 is starting to tick up. How do I know that? It looks like it's going lower, right? It looks like it's trending lower, but a couple days ago it was um, 13,401. Monday, uh, 13,396. So it is ticking lower, right? And then uh, 13,397. And then today, 13,402. Whoops. So today it just started to tick up. And that's all it takes is one day for us to get into a power trend. I'm going to um, discuss that further at my site, mcstockcharts.com uh, tomorrow. Um, so this is the start of a power trend. And, you know, for, for the layperson, it doesn't really mean that much. You know, we, all they care about is the NASDAQ's going higher. It's powering higher. We did see some uh, rotation today, but since the um, follow through day on November 1, which is this day here, we had a, a subsequent follow through day on uh, November 2. And then on Friday, November 3, it was up quite a bit. Then we had a nice week last week. And then this week, on Monday, it was down. There, there was your pullback, you know, it was down 30 points and gapped higher yesterday, which felt like, you know, short started to capitulate. Some short covering there on a high volume. You can see the increasing volume. And then today it was up ever so slightly. And I mentioned the rotation and the rotation is into the uh, Russell, the smaller cap stocks that have just been beaten down. And I'm going to get to that in a moment as well. And you can see the Russell here today uh, traded up to its um, 200 and got rejected here. You can see how it closed near the lows of the session. But a nice move off the bottom. And I mentioned uh, earlier, I don't know when, yesterday, the day before, this uh, reverse head and shoulders pattern here seems to be playing out. Um, it also is a lot of these stocks in the Russell are beaten up and people are buying them. I'm going to get to that in a minute as well. Uh, before I get to the MAG7, heck, I might as well do that now since I'm mentioning it. Stocks like Victoria's Secret, uh, pop, they're popping, Peloton, um, making a move off the Lowe's Crocs, member of the Russell, you know, a nice move here the last couple of days, up 5% today. But, you know, this is bottom picking. It's it's not what I do. You know, as a swing trader, I want to buy strength and sell strength. <laughs> And it's very hard for me to buy weakness. Etsy is another stock that, you know, is a 2020 darling, has sold off. And now the last couple of sessions you can see is up for 5% today. So that was a nice move. Uh, ENPH, which is not in the Russell, it's just a beaten down stock. It's got a market cap of uh, 12 billion. Uh, I'd call that a mid cap stock. INSP, how about that one? A uh, little uh, bio, uh, medical stock today was up. You know, nearly 10%. You can see it's been beaten down, getting some love now, uh, probably some short covering there on the Russell. And that's kind of why, you know, that is up. Some of the stronger stocks, um, you know, smaller, uh, this is a 3.8 billion market cap, making a new high today. That's American Eagle Outfitter, uh, Abercrombie and Fitch, uh, 3.5 billion market cap. And these these ones are showing strength. This is not the beaten down uh stocks in the Russell. This is a Braze 4.8 billion market cap. Actually, this is on our watch list. This looks pretty good consolidating in a base. Uh, MicroStrategy, this is one of those uh, Bitcoin plays. 7 billion market cap. That's getting a little, you know, the way it's been going, it's probably going to be ready for mid cap status here pretty soon. Uh, had a heck of a year, up more than 200%. But, and then Elf, Elf is another one that, uh, what is it, uh, 6.2 billion market cap. You know, it's, this one's just forming a base as well. I kind of like this one above the 112. 47, this is just forming a stage two base after a massive run 
After a massive, massive run for more than a year, the ALF forms a little base. So there's nothing wrong with this stock. It's just doing what it's supposed to do. It's forming a base and you can see it's got the sales and earnings growth. But anyway, I just wanted to point out the rotation into the beaten down names today. And that's why the Russell was up. The NASDAQ's doing nothing wrong. I'm going to just quickly go through these MAG7 stocks and you can see the uh, nice rip from Apple. Looks a lot like the index. Microsoft had news today, trying to distance themselves from NVIDIA. Good luck with that. Um, you know, there's a big battle going on with uh, Google and uh, Microsoft and uh, Meta and Amazon and for the artificial intelligence, Adobe as well. The artificial intelligence pie, there's only so much money to go around, but we'll see who the big winners are. Uh, I like Microsoft. I'm going to talk about this one a little bit later. Uh, Google. Another one of the Mag Seven had a nice day today. It's above its fifty, so you know I like the stocks above their fifty. It took a long time to get there, but that one looks good. Meta pulled back ever so slightly today, and when your stocks pull back, I, I put this on the site today. You got to embrace pullbacks in a you know a buy the dip type of market here, and what you're looking for is where does your stock find support. So say you own Meta platforms, and you know you saw it go right through its 50 and it's trading well. It's up almost every day and you're riding high. It's like, okay, now it pulls back. Where is this stock going to find support? Uh, if you're, you know, if you're a long-term holder, I mean, you don't really care, but if you're a trader, you want to see support here at the 10 EMA, which is uh, what today it was 324. Yesterday was 322. It's going up like two bucks a day. You can see that green line there. Uh, so, you know, you don't want to see it making, you know, taking out these lows. And I'm going to get to this later on, but that's what you look for in pullbacks is support. Where is my stock finding support? And I wouldn't even call that a pullback. I mean, just, it may, I think it made a new high today and just <laughs> there was some profit taking. So um, Amazon, now this one, uh, let me see, Berkshire Hathaway cut some of its, um, I don't know, like 5% in its portfolio, not a big deal. Amazon, you know, needed to come in. It did hit that 145. And to me, this is just trading beautifully around that buy point. Had that gap to fill there, 143.23. And I uh, did that today. So that, to me, that's a constructive day. And for Amazon, you want to see, you know, like, where is this going to find support? Maybe at the 10 there at 140.98 today. It's going up like 50 cents a day. So maybe, you know, uh, 14150 or something like that tomorrow. You know, what you want to see is a pullback, find support, and then, you know, blast higher. And uh, you see buyers come in. Anyway, where am I at here with the Mag 7? Tesla. Tesla's looking good now. A few few days ago, I was bagging on it because it was below the 20, but now uh, 200, I mean, and now it's above the 50. So it's had a nice uh, run here uh, with the NASDAQ. This looks a lot better. You can see the double bottom base here with the, um, you know, the, the standard buy point, uh, this this is program by our friend Mike and uh, Mike Webster. At, uh, and these are the couple of little buy points there. I'd, I'd try to get in a little earlier, maybe around that, this area here before it starts making that move. Um, obviously, you know, the higher it goes, the more conviction there is in the stock. Anyway, NVIDIA. Um, do I, I didn't get this? that. Stop. Could you try again? <laughs> Siri, stop it. <laughs> uh, NVIDIA Done. just pulled back slightly today. And um, there was um, some news with uh, Microsoft, and uh, you know, I, it, but I don't think it's a big deal. It was up 10 days in a row, okay? And it just pulled back near that 476.09 buy point. That's an area of interest for me. The problem with NVIDIA and buying it now is it, you know, it has earnings next Tuesday. So you can't just go heavy and, and buy and hope that it goes up on earnings. It's it's ran from 392 to today. I think it hit 390, um, 499. Yeah, so that's a heck of a run, more than 100 points. So um, yeah, do for a little breather. Let it breathe. Let it blow out earnings next week and you know trade up to 550 or 600. How about that for a scenario? Anyway, um, that's it for um, the Mag 7. I wanted to get to, and I did go over the... Um, some of the beaten down names, the rotation into these smaller cap beaten down names. And that's fine. That's healthy for the market going forward. I did want to talk about um, a couple of stocks. Obviously, you got to go to retail. Retail was a king today. 
and it was on the backs of this Target report. It was just uh, better than expected. You know, it wasn't a fantastic report, uh, report, but it was better than expected, enough to drive the shorts into covering. And you can see a nice move here of 17%. That's a heck of a move for Target. So um, it's good to see them, you know, riding the ship a little bit. Uh, for me, I think that's healthy uh, for Target and for uh, retail in general. Typically, when the Federal Reserve stops raising interest rates, and starts to cut, retail does better. And from the time where they stop raising, which was July was their last raise, to when they begin cutting, there's usually on average a 10% gain on the S&P. And the S&P is actually below, I'm gonna get into this over the weekend, but the S&P is actually below where they cut in, um, in July. So I'm looking forward to uh, more, um, gains for the market here as we are in this power trend this is costco wholesalers um you know made a new high today i don't know if it's on the backs of target or whatever it's just a really strong stock and you can see that it undercut its 50 recently and just has rallied you know november it's like flipping the switch you know the light switch we had that um august september october correction and just it seems like everything's going up now um rising tide lifts all boats type of rally so if your stocks aren't doing what you expect, just hang on. Maybe the rotation will come in and help them out eventually. Uh, Decker's Outdoors just made another high today. And I talked about this uh, shelf action here. When a stock you know, gaps up on earnings, goes up and just makes this little shelf. This is really a uh, healthy action here because it's telling you, the investor, that um, the institutions aren't willing to sell this stock. They're just holding it here. And... Um, that is a good sign when investors want that stock and they're holding it. Typically when they build a position, it takes months, maybe even years. So um, they might be back for more, a uh, bigger bite of the Deckers outdoor. Uh, another one, I've got to go through these uh, little, I already went through these little uh, smaller cap stocks, American Eagle, that one looks great, making a new high. Abercrombie and Fitch making a new high. Uh, that one looks good. Elf, I showed you that one. I like the buy point there at 112.47. Lululemon, we had this on our watch list earlier in the week, but it's just gotten away. Uh, yeah, this thing's powering higher. That looks great. So congrats to the longs with Lulu. That one made a new high. The IPO Shark Ninja. <laughs> this one sold off after its IPO and then has really gained steam. This is one of the better IPOs, in my opinion, because it didn't come in uh, you know over inflated and uh, it has real solid earnings here and uh, real solid growth uh, so you can see you know they're doing a billion a quarter here so um you know the six billion market cap so it's trading one and a half times current sales so the shark ninja is not um it's not a fly-by-night ipo that one looks good and of course coco they keep doing these uh secondary offerings you can see this sell-off here and then you know when they're through the selling they, they comes up to 3025 i gotta go to the weekly here because this is a nice you know you see base on base on base and it just can't go anywhere because of these secondary offerings but they do have you know pretty good uh sales and earnings growth you could see in triple digit we'll take that every time but um just the secondary offerings are killing that stock if you're a you know a shareholder okay i gotta get negative here for a little minute then we'll come back on the positive path the drug stocks are getting no love um you know they've had really good uh, news lately, but, you know, they've run up a lot and there's a lot of growth expected here. So, um, you know, it's kind of sell the news on the, um, the Novo Nordisk uh, study over the weekend, but, you know, not doing anything wrong. This, uh, this is Eli Lilly pulled back to its 21, um, you know, not a big deal. Uh, Novo Nordisk, I, this is an expectation breaker for me. I expected it to get support here at the 21. Today, it fell to the 50. It's a little bit of a concern for me. I mean, even if it trades below it for a few days, I mean, but at some point, you know, with the uh, sales and earnings growth and demand this thing has, eventually the buyers will come back in. It's had a really you know tough week here, I believe. Yeah, still 4.7%. So not a good week for Novo Nordisk, but it's doing better than Vertex, which is another drug stock that just got hammered today. And this is why I can't trade this thing. It does this, it, this is part of its character. I really don't know. Um, you know, the news on this, but that is an ugly looking candle. 
and that's that's why I just have it in a retirement account. And I just uh, cannot trade this stock. It just is too hard for me. I know that. Um, so that's what I did with it. I just buried it in a retirement fund. So you can see over time, you know, it does well. It's just a really hard stock for me to trade down six and a half percent this week. Anyway, that's it for the negative. I'm going to go back on the positive path. The uh, semiconductors, some of them did well today, not all of them, but Broadcom making new highs. And I show this one just about every day. It's just a you know, consolidated, this huge base ran up and they had another uh, eight and 13 weeks of consolidation. The last couple of weeks, blasting higher. It's got those um, hammer candles, which you like to see in stocks that you're along. <laughs> KLAC was formerly KLA. Tencore, uh, this is a, a, a semiconductor equipment stock, made a high and they just pulled back today. Um, getting a little extended from that um, you know, pivot point in its base here. So probably going to trade higher in the next coming weeks, I would imagine. And Marvell. Marvell was stuck around 5150 for a while there. And just uh, once it broke above the 50, this thing has been hammering higher. So Marvell looks good as well in the um, semiconductor space. Um, some software did okay today. Uh, NTNX. Uh, made a new high then pulled back a little bit so um, if you look at the weekly chart this one uh was on our uh, watch list not too long ago but consolidated now just kind of running with its moving averages and that's what swing traders like to see you know supportive moving averages that's what i talked about earlier uh brze i believe i showed this one earlier yeah this one i like um showing strength and you could say you know this pattern wreck's not picking it up, but this really does look like a double bottom pattern and now just kind of ripping higher through its 50 SMA. So BRZE looks good in VRNS. Uh, Verona Systems uh, database, don't know much about it, but if it broke out of consolidation, made a new high today. So um, this one uh, looks good as well. Mm, I think that's it for me today. Um, Except for one more thing, I mentioned earlier that, you know, as a swing trader, this is a swing trader site that I run at MC Stock Charts, and you want to lock in gains. I mentioned this this morning, I believe, in my um, in my morning report, is that you want to lock in gains and allow something to run. So let's say you... Um, Let's say you bought uh, Microsoft there at 340, that breakout there, which which we did, okay? And it ran up to 370. Let's say you bought 100 shares at 340 and ran to 370. So $34,000 turned into $37,000, okay? So at that point, you know, maybe this morning you take half off. Okay, you take half off of your trade. So you got 50% running. You want to guarantee a winning trade. You don't want to see this thing coming back down to 340. So what do you do? Well, to me... You know, in a in a strong market like this, I really don't want to see my stock trade below that uh, 10 EMA, which today was 361. But I also, I want to give my stock some room to wiggle around a little bit. So that hammer candle here, it was uh, 360.36. I'd probably put, you know, a stop at uh, 360. And that's only $9.67 away. Because my point is, I, I want to lock in a winning trade. But I also want to see this thing run. If if Microsoft pulls back sharply and then runs to 400 and you get stopped out, you're going to be upset with yourself, even if it was a winning trade, because you want to capture that, that move, that next move. And so if you're getting stopped out all the time, your stops might be too high. You might have to sacrifice a little bit of gains here to, um, you know, get the winning part, winning chunk of the next move. So uh, that's the way I would play Microsoft. Also, CrowdStrike is one that I bought at uh, about 160. But let's just say, uh, for the sake of argument here, you bought it on this pullback at 170. So you bought 100 shares at 170, $17,000, and ran up to 200. So let's say you sold, um, let's say you sold half at uh, 200. So that's 20 grand. Okay, uh, half would be 10 grand. All right, your 17,000 turned into 20,000. So you take half off there. And what I'm interested in, like I mentioned before, is stocks that are this strong should find support at the 10. And that's what I'm saying to embrace pullbacks because it shows you where support is. Now this thing gap, 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 like three days in a row. So uh, the low there is 190. 
The 10 is um, 195. I, I would let this thing come down to at least 190 here. Maybe even this, this um, yeah, 189, 189, 190. It's probably going to pull back below that level. And you know, maybe even the 21 here, which is 188. It's going to shake some people out, then probably run higher. And you don't want to get shaken out. So a lot of people are looking at that. 191, 99 is like, okay, you know, if it goes below that, I'm going to sell. It's probably going to take those people out. I want to get that chunk of the next trade. So I'm going to loosen my stop a little bit and um, sell half at the, at the 200. And if it pulls back to, I'd say about 188 or maybe even, I don't know, I'd give this thing a little bit of room because, you know, CrowdStrike's pretty volatile stock. Yeah, 188, 189. I got, I got to say about 188 here. And um, certainly I wouldn't want it to come down here to these levels, you know, the um, 183, 182. That's too close. I want to lock in some games. But uh, yeah, the 21, maybe 188. So that's how I would play the swing trade. So I'll have, let the other half run. And, you know, because you really ideally as a swing trader, you want to get that. You know, this could be a grand slam stock from here. I showed you yesterday on this IPO. There, there's no reason why this can't take out this high in after, you know, four, five, six, eight quarters of earnings. This probably will take out that high uh, the way they're uh, growing and taking market share. So I, I, I want to hold the stock. That's basically my priorities. I want to hold the stock. I don't want to sell, take profits and have that thing run higher. That's really what I don't want. But I also want to get it time to uh, to move around. I can see after hours is that it's at 200 uh, on the Palo Alto um, earnings report. Palo Alto had a real strong earnings report. Okay, it was at 233 earlier, so it's already like six bucks off the lows. So anyway, that's it for me today. Um, I have a lot of stuff for tomorrow morning, so uh, check it out um, at mcstockcharts.com. Thanks for watching. Um, this uh, market's in a power trend. And um, we're going to make, um, we're going to do well anyway at mcstockcharts.com. We never give up. Thank you for watching.